Hi everyone, this is Amy from Elysian Acres Soap and I want to welcome you to my very first ever soap tutorial video. I have had a lot of requests to make a video about this particular soap that looks like it's wrapped in bacon. And yes, it is all 100% handmade soap, um, all cold processed soap, and I will show you how to make your own. So let's jump right into it. First thing you need to know is that the outer bacon portion of the soap is made from soap dough. And I'll go into what soap dough is and how to make it or how to buy it a little bit later. But um, first, I just want to show you the colors you need. So first, you need a lot of white. White is the color you will use the most for this bacon. Then you want a nice meaty red. Um, you want a, a decent amount of that too. Then you need two different colors of pink. You can see they're just slightly different, but both fleshy and meaty, you know, good stuff. Um, I also stack the dough in this small slab mold that I have, and I have lined it with waxed paper. The purpose of the wax paper is to make a bit of a sling that goes inside of it, um, and it helps you to release the slab later on. I have also printed out a picture of real bacon here. This is what I use as my visual in front of me so that I can remember what colors I am using, what order I want to stack the colors in. Um, also, it helps me to remember which way I want to layer them so that when you slice it, you get the correct visual there on your bacon. Um, you don't have to do that, but I'm a very visual person and I really like being able to go back and reference that, that picture. So let's get going. Um, I actually, you know, I did use wax paper for this sling, but in hindsight, I wish that I would have used something stronger than wax paper, like a freezer paper or a parchment paper instead. And you'll see why later when I go to release it, that the wax paper just got very flimsy and it wasn't that helpful in releasing the soap. So um, yeah, definitely try something, you know, parchment or, or saran wrap even would be great. So you want to take your darkest, meatiest color and flatten it out. What you want to remember on this is that you don't want these layers to be perfect. They, you don't want them to be smooth and beautiful. We're going for real. We're going for meat. <laughs> There's a lot of freedom there. Um, the one thing I love about this entire technique is that it's very forgiving and it's very fun. And um, just just have fun with it. Don't stress over having things perfect. But you want to get this first layer really smushed in your mold nice and well because um, you're going to be just smashing other colors on top of it for a while. So get that first layer in there nice and tight. Um, so I'm doing two different uh, sections of the, the meaty color on the very bottom. And again, just, just really get it in there and let it be lumpy and imperfect and have fun with it. So let's talk a little bit about what soap dough is. Soap dough is cold processed soap that has been poured into an airtight container before saponification. So normally when you're making bar soap, you would pour your, your soap batter into some kind of a mold and allow it to sit overnight and then it hardens up. Well, for soap dough, we pour that batter into something airtight. I prefer using plastic bags, like Ziploc bags. And then I just squeeze all the air out, seal it up, and I allow saponification to happen while the entire batter is not exposed to any air at all. This allows it to stay moldable. The liquid inside is not allowed to evaporate and so it becomes the consistency of modeling clay or play-doh, essentially. Um, as you can see, I'm using my bare hands. So the entire batter has gone through saponification. It is, it is fully usable functional soap at this point. 
um, but it just will stay in this pliable state for as long, basically, as you continue to keep it airtight. Um, so I'm just going to zoom through this next part, <laughs> but I just wanted to mention that you'll see that my white soap dough is a bit mushier than the other colors. And the reason for that is I had a little bit of a trouble with this, this white soap dough. I used the Bacon Fragrance from Nature's Garden, which actually is really nice. It's surprisingly bacony. It, uh, a lot of the reviews said it smells like bacon bits, but hey, that, that works for me. But um, it did discolor my white soap dough a bit and it, it went quite tan. So what I did was I had to add some titanium dioxide mixed with water to my soap dough that was already made and I just, I mixed it in. I even used my uh, stand mixer and my food processor just to really blitz it together and kind of blend it back up. So my white dough has more liquid in it than the other colors and that is why. Um, it did make this batch of bacon awfully sticky. So avoid that if you can. If you know that you're using a fragrance that discolors, um, I would just start with a lot more white there in your batter and save yourself all that trouble. <laughs> but it worked out in the end. It did. You'll also notice in the, in the finished product that um, I have some tan splotches, spots in that white that did show up in the end because I didn't do a perfect job of mixing it up. And that's okay. I don't hate it. But um, when I do it again, I won't be making that same mistake. So um, you can absolutely make your own soap dough. It's very easy. I use my own standard recipe for all of my soap. Um, and I just pour it into bags, like I said, whenever I know that I want soap dough. But you can absolutely purchase soap dough already made. And I will link down below to sorcerysoap.com. Miss B, who runs so Sorcery Soap, um, I believe was the person who invented this process of making soap dough. And she is absolutely the expert. Um, she, she does sell soap dough in, in pretty much the entire rainbow of colors at Sorcery Soap. So if you are not interested in making your own, go head on over to Sorcery Soap. Um, she also has recipes there, free recipes to, uh, make your own soap dough. So it's a great resource. Go check it out. So, um, I'm just, just layering, layer, layer, layer. Keep referencing the picture of real bacon there. It, it's very helpful. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you just watch now. <laughs> watch this process and uh, I'll be back. One thing you will notice about this entire process is that I am not being gentle with these layers. I am really trying to smash them together in, in the mold and put a lot of pressure on them. And uh, the purpose for this, you'll see when it comes time for slicing the bacon, um, you really want those layers to be adhered to one another. 
So don't be shy about really smooshing them together because sometimes when you're slicing them, those layers do want to separate. And it's not the end of the world if your layers separate because you can always just uh, dampen them slightly and just kind of mush them back together because the dough does maintain that sort of modeling clay consistency for quite a while. So even if things fall apart on you, you can always mash them back together. That, like I said, it's, it's part of the fun of this entire technique is it's, you can use trial and error and, um, and fix mistakes if you need to, but really just mush it in there and you can see that I'm even just pounding on it with my fists. Get it in there. So here we have the finished slab of dough. You can release this from the mold right away. Uh, you don't have to wait. It is all fully saponified already. And as soon as you get that last layer of white on the top, it's ready to go. You're ready to slice it. Um, so this is where I was saying that I pref I wish I had used um, something stronger than wax paper. As you can see, it because my dough is so sticky, it's giving me a hard time coming out of the mold. And something like parchment or freezer paper would have been much more helpful than the wax paper, but it did work out. It, it, it's okay. Um, if that's all you've got, go for it. Um, but there is our bacon. I love this step because it looks so much like a pork belly does in real life. And it just tickles me so much. It's really fun. Um, but yeah, you'll see that it releases nicely. And now we can clean up our edges. The edges never look that great. But once you get those bits sliced off, you're going to love it. So I have a little slicing trick, um, and that is that I use my quilting ruler to help me get nice straight lines. And the other thing I use is my pizza cutter. It really is a useful tool with this because it helps to minimize drag marks along the soap. Now, if you have a wire cutter that is uh, long enough to handle this job, wire is definitely the way to go. I don't have a wire cutter this long, so my pizza cutter is my friend. And again, this batch of dough was quite sticky, so it's it's making me work for it. Normally, um, my, my batter is not my batter. My dough is not quite so sticky and it releases very easily. But there you have it. Bacon. So I'm just going to cut some more slices and then I'll show you how we start to assemble our soap. So I'm actually going to show you two different ways to make this bacon wrapped soap. The first way I'm going to show you is by um, stacking up the slices of bacon um, and then making them basically a, an outer layer in a column mold or in this case I'm using a PVC pipe as my mold. So I take this piece of freezer paper shiny side up. Remember you always want the shiny side facing your soap. That's the only way it will release. Um, and then stacking up my bacon slices. Now I went ahead and measured the inside of my PVC pipe so that I knew how long these slices needed to be and I sliced the entire loaf um, just a little bit to make it a little easier so I wouldn't have to trim every single piece individually. Now you see here we have the sticky dough problem again, but you'll see how easily it just mushes back together. It's so forgiving. 
So you just kind of smooth it out and you want to try to pick the nicer looking side of your slices and put them facing down. Remember that um, everything facing down will be the side you see um, from the finished slices of soap. Um, so this inner layer, I am just mushing together because you really do want them to stick together. You don't want um, small gaps between the slices as you put them on the paper. Otherwise, when we pour fluid batter into the PVC pipe later, any small gaps would allow the batter to, to be seen on the edges of the soap. So checking to make sure that the height is correct. And then I'm just going to take another piece of freezer paper, lay it over and smooth it out really quickly with a small rolling pin. Again, it just helps the entire column of soap at the end to have a much more uniform um, appearance. So then I'm going to use the pipe just to get the curve on this layer started. It helps um, to minimize cracking of the soap. And it is still quite, um, quite moist at this point. So cracking should be at a minimum. Um, just do your best. Just be gentle. And you don't want to force it, certainly. But as I said, if there are little cracks at the end, you can always smooth them out later. So I insert it into my pipe and then just smooth it out so that all the edges really meet the pipe. And when I do that, you'll see that a small gap appears um, where it didn't quite match up. And that is okay. So what we're going to do there is take little scraps of our pork belly. Um, just trim them up and smush them in. I try to match the colors uh, if I can because you will see it on your finished soap so tr try to match up the colors but it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, as long as you smush it in there and fill those gaps up it all comes out pretty nice in the end. And after you smooth it all out, this is what you're left with, a bacon lined tube. I went ahead and made three of these tubes and I wanted to show you what I do with the rest of my soap dough after I've made all the tubes I wanted. So I'm gonna set those aside and show you the other kind, the other way to make this bacon wrapped soap. And the difference in this kind is that it's going to be entirely made out of soap dough. Whereas in those tubes, we're going to make fresh um, soap and pour it inside. But for the remainder of the soap dough, we don't want to waste it. So this is what we do. So I'm just making a bunch of slices. And you'll see that I did actually switch to my kitchen knife on this part. Um, this batch was just so sticky that it was gunking up my pizza cutter so bad. So the kitchen knife really worked out a lot better in this case. But it's just so sticky. So on this next slice, you're, you'll see that um, that sort of separation of my layers that I was talking about and that happens. So again, don't fret. That's the whole purpose of this next kind of soap because it is a way to save all of that. It's all great soap. So let's not waste it, right? So 
So just make as many nice looking slices as you can. Have fun. So here we have my leftover soap dough that I didn't need while making the original large pork belly. And what I'm doing is just stacking it up really roughly in layers. And then I'm going to go ahead and collect all the bits and pieces, all the ugly scraps, anything that you're just not totally happy with. This is where you get to mush it up and have lots of fun with it. So just like Play-Doh, smash it together. You just want it to all come together. And then I'm going to add that to the other stack of colors. And smash it and roll it. And what you're going for here is a marbled look. It's not going to look exactly like real bacon at this point or I don't know any kind of specific meat but you just want a nice meaty marbled look and uh, and the result is really fun so I'm just gonna roll it out roughly into cylinders about the same size roughly as the PVC pipes so that our end soaps are about the same size and then you'll see the magic when you slice it in half. Ta-da! So that's gonna be the inside of our bacon wrapped soap. And what we're gonna do is take one of those slices of bacon and um, I go ahead and just run it quickly under water just to dampen the surface and make it a little stickier so that it'll really stick on to that inner puck. And there you go, you just smash it on there and use your fingers, just like with Play-Doh or modeling clay, to make those layers stick together, stick to the inner soap, smooth them out, and you just wanna make sure that you're using lengthwise uh, motions when you're doing that um, so that the colors don't blend together too much and just play with it play around figure out a technique that you love um, I use my wire to smooth it out and then there you go and again at this point it's still basically modeling clay so it's very forgiving you can reshape it there you go now on to the fresh cold process soap that we're going to make to fill in those bacon tubes i have sealed the bottom of tubes with pvc caps lined with saran wrap uh, so first things first, safety gear. Please wear your gloves. Please wear your goggles. These are my very sexy goggles. Uh, but you know what is even more sexy than these goggles? Um, not getting lie in your eyeballs is very, very sexy. So please wear your safety gear. This is my frozen goat milk. Um, and there's also a little bit of aloe vera juice in there. And I am just now slowly, slowly, slowly adding my pre-measured lye into that frozen milk and stirring for the next million years. The purpose of stirring so slowly is that you want that lye to melt your frozen milk very slowly so that it does not scorch the sugar that is naturally occurring in that goat milk. Um, if and you'll see at the end of this that it does turn a bit of a buttery yellow color um, by the time I have all of that lye incorporated, and that's totally fine. What you don't want is to add your lye so quickly that it turns orange, which means that you've really scorched your milk 
and it will give you a bad smell at that point and it's just not very advisable. So I have my lye mixture ready to go. My oils are ready to go. I add um, a lot of clay to my oil. So I'm giving it a, a little mix ahead of time just to mix all that clay in. And then in goes the lye solution. So just giving it a gentle mix first before hitting it with the mixer. And I'm going to divide this batter into two colors. The majority of it is going to be very meaty red um, with just a little bit of white mixed in just for that marbled look that we want. We're going for meat. We're going for a steak. And um, again, I am using the bacon fragrance from Nature's Garden, which I know now will add some brown discoloration to my batter. So I'm going to go for a very, very red look to my batter initially so that after a week or two when that discoloration happens, it'll be just sort of a brownish red, a very meaty brown red. So in goes my titanium dioxide into the smaller part of my batter and I am using brick dust red mica from Nurture Soap. I absolutely love this color and I use it constantly. I find it to be one of the most versatile reds out there um, and not to mention it makes the absolute perfect meat color. <laughs> So I'm mixing in that titanium dioxide and it's important to know at this point that that batter still has not quite reached emulsion so I will need to hit it with the mixer again. Here's the bacon fragrance. I am a big fan. just give that a mix. And again here I'm just checking for emulsion and I can really tell when I look at that spatula that it has not got where it needs to be yet. So I rinsed off my stick blender attachment and gave it another quick little blitz. So at this point, um, what I want to do is pour this white batter into the red from quite a height because I want it to penetrate pretty deeply and just get a really quick marbling inside. Um, I'm going to give it, yeah, look, I'm a slob guys, don't be like me. But um, just a little bit of white, just to give it that, that marbling. Um, don't pre-mix this a lot because we're going for an in-the-pot swirl. Um, and at this point I got a little worried because it got awfully ketchup and mayonnaise -y on me, but it turned out okay in the end. So at this point, I am going to leave you, uh, let you enjoy the rest of this video.
so thank you so much for watching this video, my very first ever soap tutorial. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed it, and please let me know what you think. If you have questions or comments, please leave them below. Um, I, I do intend to make more videos, so go ahead and subscribe, and thanks guys. Have an amazing day.